In this talk, I will present my paper, which is about how we can measure the effect of inbreeding in populations with structure. And this issue is particularly important for conservation biology. So if you are a biologist and what you want to do is to estimate the effect of inbreeding but in a population, but you don't have enough independent observations, then this talk is for you. And after listening to it or reading the paper, you will be able to accurately measure the strengths of inbreeding depression, even with data containing strong structure. Um, but first, I want to start with an introduction which summarizes all the important concepts you need to understand either this talk or the paper. So inbreeding is defined as mating between related individuals and is actually quite common. It's heavily present in domestic species, but it also exists in the wild. And this is especially true nowadays with the increase of habitat loss and the diversity crisis we are facing. I also want to say that it's also present in humans, and my favorite example of all time is the Habsburg royal family. This family basically ruled over half of Europe at some point in history, and their strategy was very simple. To marry within the same family to avoid any conflicts over succession. So it worked for quite some time, but uh, it led to a very, very inbred pedigree that you can see here. Um, the problem with this strategy is that we know that inbreeding can have deleterious consequences for inbred individuals, and this is something called inbreeding depression. And this guy here, so the last ruler of the Habsburg family, is the perfect example. So since he was a king, uh, we know a lot about his health. We know he had an extremely weak constitution. He was infertile, uh, had this characteristic malformed jaw, which is actually called the Habsburg jaw because it was present in many family members. And this way would make it difficult for him to either speak or eat. And we know that uh, these problems likely arose because of inbreeding. Now, individual levels of inbreeding can be measured via what we call inbreeding coefficients, and we can measure these from genomics. Uh, many different measures of inbreeding exist, but what they all aim at measuring is to quantify the homozygosity caused by inbreeding, because homozygosity could be just because of chance. And this homozygosity caused by inbreeding is called IBD, identical by descent. Um, although, until recently, there was no consensus on which one of the inbreeding coefficient is the best in the context of estimating inbreeding depression, but two were often used. The first one is called FROH, and it focuses on in the identifying long IBD segment. Uh, the second one is called FUNI, and it treats each genomic position independently, so it doesn't focus on segments. Now, to put it simply, uh, some guys here saw that FRH was better to estimate inbreeding depression, while other guys here thought that FUNI was better. And they were basically writing papers replying to each other to explain why they were right and the other team were wrong for quite some time. But uh, these guys came here and basically they solved the problem by showing that both teams were right. And this is because uh, the first one, so FRH, correlates better with homozygosity at common alleles, while the second one, FUNI, correlates better with homozygosity at rare alleles. And we know that in large populations, uh, selection tends to maintain deleterious alleles at low frequencies, so FUNI is better for large populations. But uh, on the contrary, when we have a small population, we know that the effect of drift is stronger, and so these deleterious alleles could reach intermediate frequencies. So that makes FRH better uh, for estimating inbreeding depression in small populations. Now, once we have solved the problem of which inbreeding coefficient to use, the next step is to estimate its effect on the trait. So the traditional way is to use a linear regression. So you regress the inbreeding coefficient on the trait. So you basically ask yourself how much smaller is an inbred individual compared to a non-inbred individual. And of course, uh, you can use any type of linear model. Uh, you can implement this in an HMM or Bayesian framework. Whatever you do, uh, one of the major assumptions of all linear models is that the observations are independent, which unfortunately is not the case when you have structure in your data set. And here, structure can be because uh, you have different populations in your data set. So uh, if you study an archipelago of islands, for instance, uh, but it can also be familial structure. What it means here really is that within one population or one family, 
the individuals will be closer to each other compared to the rest of the population. And this is what creates the non-independence of the data. Now, this uh, structure or non-independence problem can be particularly important in conservation because we want to quantify inbreeding depression in endangered species, and they are often either fragmented or composed of many related individuals. This is definitely in the problem because these populations uh, are the one for which we want to estimate inbreeding depression because we want to confirm whether they are uh, endangered or whether they need conservation efforts. Now, the solution uh, we proposed in this paper uh, to account for structure is basically a new model where we include the genetic relatedness matrix, so the GRM, as a random factor in the model. Uh, briefly, a GRM uh, is a matrix which summarizes the mean relatedness between each pair of individuals. And by including this in the model, what we do is simply to make sure that the difference in traits we are measuring is due to inbreeding and not relatedness. So the question you are asking now is, are these people smaller? because they are inbred, or are, are they smaller because their parents are smaller and they just transmitted the small genes to them. Now, to test this method, uh, we used empirical genomic humans data from all around the world. So it's from the 1000 Genomes project. Uh, and we test this method on several data sets. So the first one is composed of individuals with East Asian ancestry, and this represents a small homogeneous population. So no structure, because we want to test our method on a simple data set as well. Uh, this number here represents the samples. Now, the second data set is composed of the entire data set, so individuals from all over the world. And this represents a large data set with very strong structure. Uh, then we also wanted to test our method with weaker structure, so familial structure. So we simply simulated the population from a pedigree and uh, yeah. The structure is present, but a weaker than what we have in the world population. Now, from this genotypic data, we further simulated phenotypic data. So we simulate a Gaussian trait, but uh, it should work with any trait distribution. And I won't go into too much details, but basically we selected a few causal loci and we ensured that the rare alleles were always responsible for inbreeding depression. And the rarer the allele, the more deleterious and the more recessive. Then we actually compare uh, the capacity of several inbreeding coefficients to estimate inbreeding depression. In the paper, we compare eight, but I will only present three of them here. First, have two versions of f -uni, so it's one of the inbreeding coefficients I presented in the introduction, the one that treats each position independently. And the difference between the two uh, versions is quite simple. So in the first one, uh, this is the classical method, the sum is outside the fractions. So it makes it so that rare alleles have more weight on the final outcome. And in the second version, it's uh, the inverse. So the sum is inside the fractions. Rare alleles do not have more weight. So all loci have the same weight for the final outcome. And then we have one inbreeding coefficient based on IBD segments. So this is the other inbreeding coefficient I mentioned in the introduction. Uh, yeah, we only focused on long segments. So now I'll present you with the results. So all my results are in the form of violin plot. It will show the distribution of the strength of inbreeding depression on the y-axis according to the different inbreeding coefficients. The full gray line uh, is the true strength of inbreeding depression. And so the closer to the line, the better. Now, uh, the red dashed line here is just uh, for zero. So what you need to know is that in anything above this line, we failed to detect any inbreeding depression. And I first want to start by uh, presenting what happens if we use the old classical method. So in the homogeneous population, uh, we can see that there's not much difference between the two uh, blue inbreeding coefficients, but uh, they are basically better than the IBD segments based inbreeding coefficient. Um, but overall, everything is quite close to the line, so it's kind of okay. However, as soon as we add structure, we can see that none of the inbreeding coefficient can accurately estimate inbreeding depression. We are very far from this line. And the results are less dramatic, but still wrong uh, with the weaker familial structure. Now I will present you the results with our uh, new model with the same data sets. Um, so first, 
we can see that in the homogeneous population, uh, there's not much difference between our model and the classical model. So it means that our method works as well as the classical one if we don't have structure. So we can use it anyway. However, uh, when we have structure, our method really does a better job at estimating inbreeding depression. And we can see that the best estimation is obtained with uh, this version here, so the weighted version of FUNI. And uh, what's interesting is that with weaker familial structure, we can see that our model allows the correct estimation of inbreeding depression with all inbreeding coefficients. Now, I really want to stress that we know that including a GRM as a random factor in a model is definitely not something new in population genetics, but for somehow it has never been proposed in the context of estimating inbreeding depression. And we think we know why. In all the results I presented here, uh, we use one particular GRM, which is called the allele sharing GRM, which was proposed by Weir and Goudet in 2018. This is not the most commonly used GRM. And if we look at what happens if we use the most commonly used GRM, so the one estimated with GCTA, we can see here that the results are really bad. So this is classical method, our method, and GCTA GRM. And so we think that uh, that's the reason why no one thought about using it, because it doesn't work with the most common GRM. So you need really this specific GRM. Now, to conclude, uh, we confirmed that the weighted version of FUNI is the best inbreeding coefficient for estimating inbreeding depression in large populations. But uh, most importantly, we show that we can account for structure if we include a specific GRM in the model. And this is particularly important for conservation biology, as I said before, and it's important for any biologist who want to assess the effect of inbreeding in isolated, structured, or highly related populations. I just quickly want to stress that we know that the variance around the estimation of B is still very large, uh, even with our method. So it's not perfect, but uh, it's still much better than what was done until now. Here, I just want to quickly thank the co-authors, of course, and here are any information that you might want to know about our paper. So thank you for your attention, and I hope that this presentation made you want to read our paper.